There are lots of sensory symptoms. Can you maybe talk us through some of those, please? Yes, I mean, I think you're exactly right. There are a lot of sensory symptoms and often they come in um, strange ways. Uh, for example, uh, burning sensations, scalding sensations, or running water sensations, or walking on sand. So we see those sorts of sensations, and then sometimes strange ones like squeezing sensation, the so-called MS hug, yes. where people get squeezed around their chest or their abdomen. And so what causes these symptoms in MS? Uh, multiple sclerosis is a disease of the central nervous system, so the brain and the spinal cord. So ultimately, it must be a, a malfunction, if you like, of the electrical system. It's like the electrical wires short-circuiting and producing these strange sensations. And if we do have these symptoms, mm. is there anything that we as people with MS can do about them? I think it is difficult. There's not like a tablet which can treat them. Sometimes we can damp down these abnormal symptoms and we use nerve painkillers. These are often drugs that are used for other things, but they have a useful side effect in, if you like, straightening out the electricity uh, conduction. Counter sensation, counter temperature can be useful if it's yes. very, very painful. It's really helpful to know that there are things that we can do um, rather than sort of struggle on. Do sensory symptoms, once you have them, do they last forever? Sometimes they're there for days and weeks. Sometimes they just go, sometimes mysteriously they just go. As I said, we can't influence that. What we can do is provide some symptomatic treatment. Thinking about, you know, if you're newly diagnosed and you're experiencing symptoms for the first time, um, do you think they are a sign of progression? No, I don't think they are. I, th I think they're a symptom of the electrical conduction not working 100%. No, I think they're an output um, of the MS, but they're not indicative of a sign of progression. I remember being told um, in 2008 when I was diagnosed um, that, it, you know, having had sensory issues was quite, it boded well for my prognosis. Do you believe that? If one was to generally try and separate out sensory symptoms versus motor symptoms, so motor symptoms are weakness and power loss, then perhaps as a rule of thumb, sensory symptoms have a, a better prognosis than motor symptoms. Very, really difficult, I think, to individualise. But, but yes, I, I, I think that's the way we feel about sensory symptoms. Um, but it's always really difficult to give that individual prognostication. Who do we talk to about that? I think start with trusted websites and a lot of information on the MS Society, Shift MS. Start with those because you can access them immediately. Your MS nurse would be a, a good point of contact and because getting to see your neurologist you know you might be on an appointment once a year once every six months so I think the natural boundary is the, is the MS nurse. How do we know whether it's your like you say this interruption to sort of nerve conduction uh, versus um, actually a relapse? Yes yeah, so I think that's sometimes very difficult because um, there's natural fluctuation in symptoms. Uh, a relapse in my mind tends to be much harder much more concrete so something new, it's building over days and weeks. It has a tempo to it. For example, numbness occurring in the legs, perhaps rising up to the tummy, and it's kind of not going away. And it's, it's that sort of time frame to it. If we're booked in to speak to somebody uh, in our MS team about either a sensory issue or, or any of those issues mm. we just discussed, in order to, to make the best clinical assessment from your end, what do we need to bring to that appointment? So, so as, as doctors and nurses, we're trained in quite a specific way. We'd like to know when the symptom began, how it began, were there any other factors or triggers to it, and how's it going in a succinct way. So it's worth writing it down. So I might have thought what had occurred last Wednesday, but then that person's partner said, you, you've had it for two months. So really handy, I think. Not, not an endless script, but just in a few bullet points, just to write it down. So you and then you can talk about that to the professional. Sensory symptoms and their duration can vary hugely. Sensory symptoms aren't necessarily a sign of MS progression. It is a good idea to record symptoms when you experience them to give your neurologist as much information as possible. Thanks so much for watching. For additional content on MS from treatments and diagnosis to mobility and sex, check out more from Lived Health MS.